guys this is um kc from kc designs so um today i'm going to be showing you how to create another logo inside of um illustrator so let me show you guys what we'll be creating today so this is what what we're going to be creating today so we're going to create the, the logo in illustrator and then take the logo back to photoshop and then do some mock-up designs on it like as you can see here so um without further ado let's get started so back to illustrator file new then i'm going to be using the um, 2000 by 2000 and um, pixel document size so i like using that because it just kind of fit properly properly squared so good so click on create and then we have um uh loading up so let me just close this so by the way if you want to bring out your panels like this just go all the way to windows then whichever one you, you would like to bring out just click on that and then the panel appears by the side <clears throat> so um click on my space bar to kind of position my screen or control zero to kind of fit my document to the screen and then i'll go in and then drag in as usual my logo to illustrator drop this in here and then kind of resize this holding shift and alt while you resize okay put this by the side okay like so okay so um holding clicking on my space bar and then click and drag on my mouse to move so kind of position this right about here so the first thing i'm going to do is to go to create my rectangle i'm going to create something like so maybe i should start with a perfect rectangle so i'm just going to click on rectangle tool and then just tap on my screen and then maybe let's go uh, five maybe one thousand by one thousand by one thousand okay go back to my move to kind of change the color of this so I can easily see this and then I'll just um, uh, hold an alt key hold on the alt key only the alt key just to resize it like so on both ends and not and not proportionally so still doing this okay something like this is fine so I'm just going to fix this here and I'm going to change the rotation to around them um, think 45 degrees 45 okay cool and then all I have to do is to make a duplicate of this command um, option click and then go to your uh, transform reflect put this by the side like so click on preview and then uh, okay and then make a copy of this hold and shift and then pull this down what is like so okay that's just cool so now i want to move my the stroke on it so you can see the have this shift have a, have a stroke on it so selecting these two and then go all the way to stroke none so I've removed the stroke so it kind of perfectly matches it so since I have that done I'm gonna click on this and then just pull this in like so pull this in like so okay and then just gonna position this here okay that's fine so the next thing I'm going to do is um kind of control R to bring out your rulers so maybe i'll just bring something around something around down here and then zoom in to this area drag a selection around there okay go back to my selection tool now i need to clear those guides again clear guides so go to clear the guide go to guides and then click on clear guides then I'm going to drag another one that sits right about 
here okay then go to my direct selection tool select this point holding down shift okay holding down shift i'm not supposed to hold down shift but just drag this around here okay that's perfect so control zero to zoom out space bar and drag out so i'm, I'm trying to be a, a little more perfect than the way i did it here so so get a more decent result so while i've done that that's fine so the next thing i'm going to do is to um uh okay select this shape and then still in my dress selection too select the two co the two white dots here then kind of pull this in like so so i have something quite rounded that's fine okay so that's cool what else okay so while i have this so i like making um backup just in case something goes wrong so selecting the both of this holding down alt drag this out holding down shift so it constraints to one axis and then you can release the bolts now so i have a copy of this in case anything goes wrong so drag this back in like so so the first thing i'm going to do the next thing i'm going to do is to select both of this go to my pathfinder so if you can't find your pathfinder just go all the way to window and then kind of screw down you see pathfinder up here okay so control zero to center to screen okay so unite united this shape so um okay next thing i'm going to do is to uh kind of uh cut this shape into half i like as you can see here as you can see here so i'm going to do that using my pen tool so click on my pen tool starting from right about here click and go all the way here click and go all the way outward i'm kind of filling the center of the shape then as you can see now i have if a, a, a my pencil has been i drew my pen my parts but now my part has a feel so to remove this just go all the way here and then just switch this so your part doesn't have a feel anymore just a stroke and i go back to my selection tool to accept that so um going back to selecting this part then i change the stroke color to black okay and maybe i'll go in a bit more kind of zoom in around here click on this and kind of pull my parts my part out ctrl z click on that part and kind of pull this out okay so now i have that all set up so zoom to kind of okay that's fine uh so the next thing i'm going to do is to use this part to divide the shape below this so go to objects go to parts and then click on divide objects below so do make sure you click on do make sure your part is being selected while you do this and your part should be on top every layer so if if, if it isn't on top every layer you can always uh change the arrangement by going to the layers layers open this now you can see this indicator down here it's telling us the particular layer that's been selected so that's for the parts and the parts on top everything that i have here so that's fine so the parts is selected and go all the way to objects parts and then divide objects below now that part actually divides the object below so now i have two separate pieces so i have one piece here and then the other piece that's cool so ctrl z to go back so the next thing i'm going to do is to kind of give them their individual gradients that's exactly what i want to do so click on click on the first one first of all i drag in a rectangle like so holding alt key and move this aside holding the alt key also moving this aside with the shift key to make it constrained on a straight line and then i'm gonna i'm gonna click on the first one go to my eyedropper tool and kind of pick this shade here you can turn off your caps lock so it shows the actual eye drop uh, eye dropper icon click on the next shape click on this kind of click on this part clicking on the third shape clicking on the eyedropper 
and kind of click on this part also oh control z selection two so these two the, the, both of these look the same so instead of doing that i'm not going to use this to make my gradient so click on the gradients click on the gradients and then go to my gradients so click on this click on this shape go to color copy the x code copy go back here go back to my gradients double click in here and kind of paste this rgb paste this here like so cool click on the next shape go to color copy the x code copy click on this go back to my gradients double click on this color stop click on this menu rgb and paste my x code cool so uh i'm going to be changing this up to um, from the from linear to radar so clicking on this shape go to the eyedropper tool and then just click to apply that then if you feel uh it's not looking correctly as it should you can always fix that it's an easy fix so just click on that shape and then um, first i want to reverse this cool i want that click on the first shape then go all the way to gradient 2 click on that now you can see the gradient editor showing and then i just want to um kind of pull this out like so kind of rotate rotate this like so kind of go in here okay cool so i have something that looks nice now i can always manipulate this if i want to maybe i can drag around here like so so it depends on what i want to create pull this in drag this out okay now that's cool so i like that the way it is so the next thing i'm going to do is to do the colors for this also so with my selection tool select this tree holding down alt drag this down to make a copy of it and repeat the same process so click on this go to eyedropper tool click on here click on this shape go to eyedropper tool and click on this bright portion around here okay then for the third one it's gonna be a combination of both so let me change that to radar linear first click on this go to my color copy the x code copy copy the x code go in here go to the gradient double click on this okay it's on rgb that's fine and paste this here click on the next shape color copy click on this gradients double click on this and kind of paste this in here like so cool so i'm going to click on this shape now i can apply my gradients go to my eyedropper tool and click on this so it will automatically apply the gradient for me that's fine so let me see radar reverse okay gradient tool and kind of pull this out like so kind of pull this out and kind of expand this I need to expand this I need to expand scale this up maybe a bit more like so cool so as you can see now i've gotten my gradient for the boat shape so the next thing i'm going to be creating is um maybe this needs to be more yellowish i guess so let's drop in another yellow and make this more double click make this more yellowish okay cool okay oh no ctrl z take that back okay then go to my selection so, so now that done so the next thing i'm going to do is to apply this kind of interesting color shades so that's not so difficult so um i'm going to repeat the same process by going to my pencil kind of click in here like so click click on hold and 
click and drag like so that's fine so now i'm having a few so just gonna switch this and then give it a solid color and go back to my selection tool so that's cool so maybe i'll just shrink this down a bit more raise this up like so kind of rotate it so i have more interesting shapes so i'm going to do the same thing i did before divide below so i'm going to go all the way up here yeah. parts divide below okay then for the gradients okay now as you can see i'm having a kind of interesting shape down here already let me choose this okay as you can see i have an interesting shape here so let me zoom in so you have a kind of some kind of break up in the flow on the gradients that's cool so zoom back up onto zero I'm kind of repeat the same process in here I see another one in here so go to my pen tool kind of draw something something that cuts across like so then switch this switch it down to stroke with a solid color done okay come back here objects parts divide below and i'm getting really really interesting flow so let me change this up to okay that's fine then go down part also pen to start all the way here then pull this out like so Put this out like so switch this to stroke come to my kind of shrink this here come go to my selection to select that point and kind of select that point kind of pull this down select this kind of pull this in then go to my objects parts divide below cool so i have this interesting shape so you can do this as, as little as you want depends on you so i'm going to leave this as it is so the next thing i'm going to do is to um select this shape and then uh control alt shift this by the side holding the shift key then go to my pathfinder and click on unite so just one full shape now i'm going to remove the stroke the fill on it and switch it down to stroke for the stroke i'm going to be, I'm going to be using white colored shape white white color for the stroke okay let me change it to black so i can see it black stroke increase this maybe a bit more uh maybe a little bit more around 20 that's fine so next i'm going to do is to scale this up kind of holding down shift and drag this in here pull this out just a little bit pull this out okay that's fine so now i'm going to change i'm going to change the color now to uh white since i i know the shape already so uh change this to okay stay on black then i kind of reduce the opacity of that if i change it to white so take this down to around 50 percent then i can change this to white okay that's fine even though it looks invincible but it's still there so the next thing i'm going to do is um click on that shape go to my layers and then kind of lock it look for the indicator so that's the shape with the indicator lock that layer then i can select this like so 
go to Photoshop, create a new document, 2000 by 2000 document also. So I want to start creating the mock-up for the design. So, it's loading up. Okay, I have something there, 2000 by 2000. Then uh, click Create. So turn this off. The next one I'm going to do is to uh, go get my reference. Kind of drag this in here like so. And kind of increase this. Uh, enter. Put this around here like so. Then go to my layer. FX, gradient overlay. Okay. Change this to black. Okay, cancel this, reset to default. Okay, change this to black, white. And then click OK and change this to from linear to radar. Okay, reverse this. Come here and kind of drag the white part all the way here, like so. And go to the black portion. Now just pick this color from here, around here. So it kind of blends so okay click okay increase my scale just to get the white part shining more open this i want to make this fully white okay that's full white already cool maybe down here maybe i'll just take this down a bit okay okay that's fine click okay then click okay and now i can just temporarily hide this that's fine Okay, let me go back to my gradients and kind of push out the white. Kind of push this out like so. Increase the size. Push this out like so. Click OK. And go back to Illustrator. Drag this and drop this in here. Cool. So I have this in here. OK kind of fake position this here click enter enter to apply this go back to illustrator then now i need to unlock this unlock this click on this to unlock that then just kind of find the shape in here and then just drag this also to photoshop drag this in here okay nice you can now you can see it Kind of position it where it should be around there. Enter to apply this. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to uh, select the both of them. Control C. Kind of scale this down like so. Enter. And look for the first one I dragged in. Make a copy of this. Duplicate this layer. Duplicate. Click OK. Click OK and then. If you look at the image very well, you notice that there's another color at the back, another shape at the back. So I need to get that shape out. So uh, I'm going to control all my control key, key and click on it to make a selection around it. So now I can fill that up. So click in here, pick this color, click OK, then Alt backspace on your keyboard to fill that up. So it's not filling. I need to rasterize this. Rasterize layer. So fill that up. Control Alt backspace. Control D to deselect, and then drag this layer downwards, and kind of push it out like so, and then take down the opacity down like so. Cool. That's fine. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is um uh, selecting this tree. Control G to put them in a group, or you just right click group layers i'll name this logo okay kind of position this here that's fine then give them a drop shadow fx drop shadow pull this out here so reset this now the drop shadow going on uh the size maybe i should take down the size like so cool Increase the size, okay. Cool. Click 
click OK on this. Okay. Then now I want to create my shadows. As you can see, the shadow here. Yeah. See the shadow. So uh, maybe I need to brighten up my background a bit. Okay, maybe I'll, leave, I'll just leave it as it is. So let me quickly fix my shadow. As you can see, the shadow coming out here, like so, and it kind of fades out here. So I want to create the same effect on this. So, but let me see if I can add some more juice to this logo. So, uh, U and saturation. Okay, turn that on. Clip this to the layer below. So let's give this more. Wow. Now it's really getting more lively. So I'll drag this all the way up. All the way up for the saturation. For the brightness, maybe uh, like so. Increase this. Oh, cool. Now we're getting the shape very similar to the one I showed you guys. So that's fine. So collapse this. That's fine. So I want to create my shadow. So let me kind of select this to kind of pull this out here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create my shadow. So let me take a look at this again. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in like so. So I'm going to start by um, let me zoom out into zoom out. Take my go to my pen tool, my pen tool, control plus to zoom in. Kind of be inside my shape. Kind of go inside the shape. So let me start by going out. Start drawing from out outwards. So I'll start from click around uh, here and in here. Then I can zoom in with Control Plus. Cool. Drag this down and kind of follow that part. Go out. Kind of follow that part. Inward so my shadow doesn't come out. Somewhere around here, then control zero to zoom out, control minus, and then go back to my reference to kind of visualize how it's looking. Cool. Then I'll just click outward here. Yeah. Then go all the way and go back to my initial points. So now I've drawn that part now. So I need to create a layer below my background. So new layer. Right click inside of this and then make selection. Click OK. So now, I've, so now I have a selection. So I want to fill the selection with black. So I'll go to my foreground, drag this all the way to black. And then Alt Backspace on your keyboard. Ctrl D, that's fine. So I want to just kind of zoom in. OK, that's cool. So one thing I want to do now is to uh, take down. Is to let me add the max. Let me add the smart max. Convert to smart max. Smart object rather. Then now I'm going to uh, take down the fill. Like so. Take down the fill. Then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Increase this a bit. Uh, that's just too much. Okay, click OK. That's fine. Click OK. And then I need to add a max to this. So add a layer max. Then zoom out. Then hold the control key and then click on that thumbnail. And then go to uh, gradient. So I want to choose from black to white. Black to white is fine. Click OK. And it's on linear. That's fine. So I'll just go all the way and kind of click and drag. Like so. As you can see, it's already fading that out for us. I need more of that. OK, cool. Z, zoom out a bit. OK, now Control D on your keyboard. Voila. So now we have some shadow going on down here. 
So I seem to go back to that layer and then reduce the opacity. Take the opacity down a bit more. So it just barely shows. I can still go in here. Go to my brush tool, increase the brush, change this to black, and then kind of reduce the opacity of that brush and kind of clean up clean it up a little bit. So it's getting kind of faded out down here. Cool. So and that's all. That's how you create uh, a decent logo like this. So thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you do like and then subscribe. I really, 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 really appreciate that and share also. So thank you guys for watching and then see you in the next lesson.